Hey guys, I just thought if I was going to work on this little like, I don't know, it's not really a seascape, harborscape? I don't know, that I would just go live on Periscope. So if you caught my post last night on social media, this is the photograph or one of the photographs I took when we were in Half Moon Bay over the weekend um, of the fishing boats that were across the restaurant um, in the harbor from where we had lunch. Um, I like this one. I like the reflections in the water in this one, but I like, I'm gonna do, the, uh, I'm gonna do something based on this one. Um, and hi, um, we had um, lunch at um, um, Half Moon Bay Brewing Company. Yeah, it's a really nice place, right Anne? Hi Anne. Okay, so I'm gonna work on this a little bit and I just thought I'd get on Periscope while I do it. So last night I did a quick uh, pencil sketch. There you can go. Just a quick pencil sketch. Not, you know, an exact copy of the photo, something inspired by the photo. And just some basic lines, not a lot of detail. And then earlier this morning, I put a little bit of masking fluid in a couple of places that I wanted to, at least for right now, preserve and keep white. Um, and you guys are going to be upside down. I don't know how to fix that and still see the comments. Hey guys, um, I've got my Daniel Smith watercolors out and I think I'm going to start by doing the sky. And I'm going to get the paper wet. Hi, how are you? I'm going to start by getting the paper wet back here. You want to paint? Well, get your paints out and paint with me. Why not? Did you guys hear that Ann Williamson, Cinnamon Cooney, Susan Hillis, and I don't know who else is, they're doing a, um, I just heard about this like two minutes ago. They're doing a Periscope collaboration this Saturday morning at, no, we're not painting, let's paint nude. Really? Okay, so do I have to block you? Or are you gonna just leave? I don't know, maybe. Seriously, I'm only on for like a minute and I already get a troll. <clears throat> yeah, 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 yeah. We'll see if we get another nasty comment and I'll catch you that was and I'll block them. Anyway, so about seven, um, hi. So 7 a.m. Pacific Standard Time here in California. I don't know what time that is anywhere else in the world, but that's when they're doing the collaboration here on Periscope, so you should, um, you should get on. Um, I'm going to start with this color um, that's called Lunar Blue. Oops, where are you? There you are. This one here. 10 p.m. Eastern Time. Okay, that's good to know. Yeah, because I don't know. I barely know what time zone I'm in, people. <laughs> I know that doesn't sound right, but it's true. Hey, Seattle, the home of Daniel Smith Paints, which I'm using today. I love Daniel Smith Paints. Oh, thank you, yes. I made this a long time ago. This is the original one. The video is here up on YouTube about how I made it. And it's, I guess, been recently inspiring, um, hey, Russia, wow. It's been recently inspiring um, Callie Black and um, Secret Soto and a few others to make jean aprons. So yay. It's, to this day, not my best, best made video, but it is the most popular video on YouTube. So I'm just doing my sky right now and the paper is wet so the paper the paint is kind of going where it may and like I said I'm being inspired by my photos which are, are right here okay you know what block Yeah, I just blocked that, Anne. 
I'm waiting for like a little tripod to come in that I've ordered for my camera. And when that comes in, I mean for my phone, when that comes in, I'll be able to do better. Um, I know, really? I'll do be able to do better views for you on this um, periscope thing. Hopefully it'll be in soon. So I'm still I'm still with a lunar blue and it's kind of it's wicking in the water, which is what I want. And I'm not gonna cover the whole thing. I just I wanna cover just part of it. It was a cloudy, kind of a stormy day. And I am looking at where the sunlight was coming in the photo, <clears throat> where the shadows mostly were. I like that. Um, but I feel like it needs a little bit of some other color of blue. Gino is a watercolor queen. <laughs> I love my watercolors. Is being the watercolor queen a good thing? I don't know. <laughs> Hi, how are you? We already had a troll. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> I like Periscope, but geez. I'm going to add a little bit of, um, what is this, cobalt blue violet. It doesn't take long. No, it doesn't. I like Periscope. I'm liking doing Periscope, but holy moly. Now I have my paper stretched on a uh, blocking board that I ordered actually from the UK. And it looks like this in the back. It's by Ken Bromley. And um, the paper, you get the paper wet and then you use these rubber things and you stretch it around. So what? no matter what I do to it or how wet I get it, it's not going to buckle, which is fabulous. I always like to do my backgrounds first, like the sky, and get it, you know, almost perfectly the way I want it. Hi! That way, uh, Lisa Swank, hey, how are you? That way when I um, go to put the ships in, I don't have to try to touch the sky up when I start putting all the masts in. The sky is already done. Let's see. So this is that cobalt blue violet. I'm not going to put too much of it because I don't want to make the sky too violet. You know what? I forgot a clean rag. I think there's a pile right behind me. So I am going to lift a little bit up. Let's see. So you won't ever be able to get it all up. You have to work with watercolor from light to dark. Um, but the paint, some the pigments will stain the paper, some pigments more than others. So you want to be careful that pretty much that when you put it down that you put it in the right place the first time. Oh, I will definitely be posting the finished photo to all social media accounts. Um, I won't be probably filming it unless I'm here on Periscope, but definitely I will be um, filming it on, um, I mean, photographing it and putting it everywhere. So here's what our sky looks like right now. Let's see. And this is the original photo. Oops. So that's a good suggestion, yeah. Definitely, you know, you guys know I share everything with everybody. And when I'm asked not to share something with somebody, it's really hard for me to keep my mouth shut, you know? <laughs> I really have a big problem with that. Oh boy. All right, for the water underneath the boats, um, I'm gonna use the same lunar blue and then I'll add a little bit of turquoise something to it because I like my water to be turquoise so let's start with the lunar blue again and I'm still I've still got this pretty big wide mm, brush it's a quarter three quarter inch flat uh, Princeton Neptune brush um, I'm gonna start by not having my paper be wet and I'm gonna actually be a little bit more careful here than I was with the sky because I don't want to get a lot of this into the boat shapes 
necessarily. Hear my stomach growling. I just ate lunch. I think I ate too many snap pea chips. Who else is addicted to snap pea chips besides me? And then I'm just going to pull it down with some water but so that on the, on the brush clean so that we get this kind of even transition between the color and the white paper without there being a line there. I'm going to already start suggesting the shadows under the boats with some extra pigment from the lunar blue. And I'm going to just leave it sit there and let it wick down into the water. I might need to switch to a smaller brush soon. Yeah. Okay. Let's keep going as I have more boats to do. How are you guys all today on this? Fabulous Tuesday. Oh, thank you. I'm not worried about my pencil lines. I am going to leave them. I probably won't even try and erase them when I'm done. I'm going to let them help me suggest my shapes in the finished painting. Oh, I'm glad you're good, Anne, because I know you have good days and bad days. Again, over here, just like with the other side, I'm going to take some of the lunar blue. I know what it's like to be in chronic pain because of the shoulder thing I had. Besides having a torn rotator cuff, as if that wasn't enough, I had giant calcium deposits. They hurt hurt all of the time. I got I get asked that a lot by doctors. Well, when did they hurt? All the time. I'm going to pull some of this out right here. I am liking the way that looks. Now there's ripples in the water in the original photo. The ripples are going, oops, you know, side to side. If you guys remind me if you're on social media, when I post, I'll post the pictures of the painting like progress pictures. Like I'll, after we do today's layers, wherever it ends up, I doubt it'll be finished. I'll post a picture. If you guys remind me, I'll post the original for you too. And that way, if you guys want to try painting along, you can do that. I'm just painting some. I'm still, I haven't switched to any other colors yet. I'm still using Lunar Blue. I like this color. It's like a bluish, grayish color. It's one of my favorite Daniel Smith colors. I want to make a trip to Seattle just so I can go to Daniel Smith. Well, and visit my parents. They don't live too far from there. I should probably visit them too. <laughs> Mom, if you're watching this. <laughs> so now I'm just putting in some lines. Starting to suggest some of the masts and things you see above the water, whatever would be above, what's above the water would be below the water but it would not be an exact reflection of. So you want to make sure, you know, distort your line a little bit because that it's going to make it look more real. It's too much water. I should be getting the mail or doing dishes or laundry or something, but I'm still painting. <laughs> Yay. 
Okay, it's a good thing my husband texts me before he comes home so I know when to go do the laundry. Oh, thank you. See, and that's just a few, you know, brush strokes with a, uh, that's just one color of paint. I know, right? Well, he knows I'm stressed out about now, uh, right now, so he's not, I don't think he's too concerned. Um, let's add, I still want to, I'm still, yeah, um, and he knows, that's why he texts me on it when he's on his way home and he works in Fremont. So when he texts me, I have 45 minutes to get all the chores done. I was supposed to be doing all day long to get him to get him done. <laughs> Oops. Um, I still want to put some turquoise in here though, I think. Let's see, get, get my turquoise color is kind of wet. Um, I'm going to use um, ultramarine turquoise. I'm going to follow my instincts. I'm always telling you guys to do that. So this is Daniel Smith Ultramarine Turquoise. It's, it's, kind of, it's a little bit on the green side, but I think I'm liking that for this project. And I'm gonna just add a bit of it here and there. And before I add too much of it and before it dries, I'm gonna go in, rinse my brush off, off and go in with just some water, clean water. So I can push that around and sort of get it to mix and blend with the lunar blue. I'm trying to remember to look up and look at the screen here on Periscope. That way if you guys are asking me any questions, I don't miss them. You don't always have to worry about getting rid of all your lines. You let the lines and the puddles and drips from your watercolor help you create the finished picture that you want. <laughs> Yay! Your first live video to watch. Um, I'm going to take something called neutral tint, which is like a very translucent, dark gray. It's not really black. It's really great when you're doing water. I'm sorry, I've got to like... Price, price tag goober on my paintbrush. Okay. And I'm going to go in here. This is neutral tint. And I am. Oh, thank you. Made out of my husband's old blue jeans. So this is neutral tint. And I'm going to use the neutral tint to help me create the shadows in the water. I do expressive watercolors. I don't do literal translation. This is as literal as I ever get, to be perfectly honest and blunt. I'm still using my three quarter inch flat. I haven't switched to anything else. And I am trying to remember to look at my inspiration photo. So I put the right colors in the right place. And it's by inspiration photo is just that it's inspiration for the finished piece. It's not, this is not intended to be an exact replica of the photo, just inspired by. And right now I'm just really focusing on these shadows in the water. The reflections. You want to work light to dark with watercolor. Don't start out with your darkest colors because then if you get it in the wrong place you really can't, you're really kind of stuck. You can't, can't lift it up. Thank you. Before we do anything else with the water, I'm going to turn it around so you can see. That's what I have so far. 
this is again this is our inspiration photo sometimes you have bad connections with periscope I have that sometimes in the middle of Anne's um, broadcast I kept losing connection I think that has to do with uh, cell phone carriers more than it does with anything else I could be wrong I'm frequently wrong I'm wrong a lot um, I'm going to go in with what color what color you're working on canvas or what this is watercolor paper and it's stretched onto a Ken Bromley uh, watercolor stretcher board um, it has it's a solid piece of wood with grooves in the side and it has these rubber bits and you get the paper soaking wet and then you wrap it around the board and you ma you use a mallet to put the rubber bits back in and it pulls the paper around and when it dries it's tight as a, tight as, tight as a drum. Okay, so now I'm going to go in with, and again, I'm going to use, I think Lunar Blue is going to be our color for this painting. Um, or do I want to go in with Payne's Gray? I might want to go in with Payne's Gray. I like Payne's Gray. Payne's Gray is a good color. This is a Princeton Select Pointed Filbert brush. Oops, there we are. So it's like happy medium between a flat and a round, and it's got this great point on it. And I think it'll be good for getting around these ships. Um, yeah, let's do Payne's Gray. Around the ships, and also um, we have a look like a there was a there's a dam there. I think it's a man-made dam or harbor um, thing. So I'm mixing my Payne's Gray. There we go. I'm, hi, how are you? So I'm gonna mix some of my Payne's Gray with a little bit of brown. I'm gonna use Bloodstone. So this is Daniel Smith Bloodstone. And that just turned the Payne's Gray a lot more brown than it was. Usually Payne's Gray is a dark blue black. And this is the color of Bloodstone right here by my thumb. And I'm going to use this to go in here. Because now the sky is dry. I'm going to use my bigger brush that I had before to just pull in some clean water. And the paint I just stuck on there is going to run and bleed and it's going to it's going to take the easier road. It's going to follow the water. So I'm going to use that to my advantage and let it do that. And then I'm going to take some more of that paint. And in the back of the picture, you can barely see it, but there's a line back here behind the ships where the rest of the harbor is. The rest of the dam or whatever you want to call it is. Hey, Cindy. Okay, so now I'm gonna go again with my larger three quarter inch flat brush right up underneath that paint I just put on there and I'm going to just put some clean water. I want that color to move its way down between the ships. I don't want it to go up into the sky and because we're working with watercolor, it's going to take the easier road and it's going to follow the clean water. That's what you want. Now while that's wet, I'm going to go back to the smaller pointed filbert brush and I'm going to look and see, you know, where we have on here some really dark spots. 
If you guys have any questions, let me know. I, I am continuing to look up at the camera. If it seems like I'm kind of getting lost a little bit, it's because I keep stopping and kind of looking at the camera. Yeah, that's pretty nice, huh? What do you think? The other thing we can do is I have this little bird here that was in my photo, and I think I want to use the same color. Because this is completely dry up here now, so I can just put this paint on here. Thank you. And it's not going to go anywhere, and I think I just want a hint of the bird. I don't really necessarily want the whole bird. Maybe just like one wing. Thank you. Have you guys noticed with Periscope there's some odd people on here? And I don't just mean that the people commenting. I love watercolor. When I first started doing fine art and less crafty things, um, I chose watercolor because it was easy and very portable and it's still my first love. I'm going to also use this color, I think, to suggest some of the um, windows on some of the ships here and some of the shadows, I think. Or I may actually, let's take, I take that back. Let's take the color we have on here and let's mix it with some of our lunar blue. Yeah, 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 yeah. I like that color better. Watercolor is really great medium to learn if you think you have control issues because with watercolor you have no control. <laughs> no control. So it kind of it forces you to let go of those issues. Now the thing about this um, flat uh, pointed filbert that's really nice is I can go in here like right here with these little windows and I can either lay it on its side because it's a flat brush and get a lot of coverage or I can just go in with a little point and some water and work in a tiny teeny tiny space. Right? And, and push that paint around. This is like a walkway between the ships. I gotta do something about that. Let me do, I'm gonna just deal with one thing at a time. Complete failure. You know what? I have some stuff that I've done that's complete failure. But that's how you learn. I think you learn the most sometimes from the stuff that is a failure. Don't be scared of painting and just trying and don't be scared of failing. I failed plenty at painting. Yeah, I did. Um, watercolor is a great medium if you think you're the kind of person like I can be who tends to try to have way too much control over things that are really not controllable. Um, watercolor might be a good medium for you to let go of some of that because with watercolor you don't have any control. <laughs> See? I knew it. I could, I could hear that in your voice over the periscope. A fellow person who has control issues. I have total control issues. I think it comes with the whole having anxiety disorder thing. So my therapist has told me. <laughs> people with anxiety disorder tend to be people who like to see things in black and white and have control over things. Well, gee, that fits me into a T. <laughs> so this is just black. Nothing special about this color. It's just black. And I'm using it to suggest my boat shapes. I need some more water. Yeah, see? As soon as I say that, people are all, oh, yeah, that's true. Get his 
true. Unfortunately, it's true. <laughs> So, and I'm, I'm going in here with the black. This is black. I don't always use black in my watercolor, but sometimes it calls for black. Yeah, see, water, doing watercolor can teach you a lot about your art and yourself, I think. I'm staying away from this part up here because I need to add some black up there, but it is, um, or some black maybe mixed with lunar blue, but it's wet and I don't want the black to go in the wrong place. Except I got a drop of water in the wrong place. That's not the first time that's happened. <laughs> now this is just water. And this is the kind of painting that you shouldn't feel like, despite the fact that you're using watercolor, that you have to rush. You know, just take your time, do a few layers. Enjoy the process. I am using Daniel Smith watercolors, which happens to be one of my favorite brands of watercolor. Love their paints. They are made here in the United States, in Seattle, I believe. Yeah, they're fabulous paints. And I don't generally get too political, but I am all for buying supplies made here by American companies if we can. Any of you who follow me on social media know I don't normally get too political, because, and I tend to take people off my newsfeed who do. Just <laughs> FYI, but... If I can do my small bit by supporting American companies, I'm going to do that. So I'm not going to, you know, blend out all my lines. And if I get puddles in kind of a little bit of the wrong place, I'm going to just let it go. I still need to work on this little walkway. But that's just a few minutes of painting. What do y'all think? So Daniel Smith watercolor paints, um, as well as other paints in their category, are um, artist grade paints are more uh, pigmented than normal paints, and um, these particular paints are made with pigments that other paints are not and they have some colors that nobody else has. They also granulate really well and you get little you know textures of the paint in the paper um, that has to um, do with like like right here. I love the way they look and they have some fabulous colors and they have a huge 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 range of colors and they're readily available everywhere. Um, and I saw that somebody asked me to post something will you explain explain what? I'll be happy to explain um, let me know a little more about what you want me to explain. They have complexity. Yeah, that's a good word for it. It's been a tough week for me, and it's going to be a tough week, so I couldn't think of that word, but yes. they have. A, there's a lot of complexities to the paint, and um, the way they lay on the paper, the way they stick in the texture of the paper. Um, they use some um, semi-precious... Um, Oh, okay, good. They um, uh, they uh, use some semi-precious um, elements to pigment their paints um, that nobody else uses. Um, and they have this is my this these are the colors I own in Daniel Smith. They have I think two hundred and like thirty eight colors or something. Um, they have a color dot card that you can get that cost I think like $25 or $28 and you can get a set of every single one of their colors a little dot of actual paint 
Um, let's see if I have mine. Here's mine. Um, I cut mine up and I put it in this little book that I made. Um, but this is, will show you. It's a little dot of actual paint. And you could actually make a painting from this. It's enough to do like little ATC cards or something. And you can get this from DanielSmith.com. I got my Daniel Smith paints from a local art supply store here in San Jose called um, University Art. I've also gotten some from Dick Blick and um, Palace Art and Office Supply in Santa Cruz and Lens Art also in Santa Cruz. A lot of places carry um, Daniel Smith paints. Um, you can order it direct, directly from them. Um, or I think Jerry's Artorama has them. I think Cheap Joe's has them. I mean, I think all the big companies have Daniel Smith paints. What do I want to do now? What part do I want to work on now? I think we should put some masks in. It'll start to look like a painting. I need some, I need a straight edge. I need a straight, where's my ruler? Okay, so we can get straight. All right, so I'm gonna stick with um, the black for now, I think that we've been using. I think I'll mix a little bit of the lunar blue in it. Just a little bit, not too much. Okay, so this is one way of doing like straight lines in watercolor. Let's see. You could also go in here and you could um, you could do the masks with the ink pen if you wanted. I pushed a little bit too hard on the paintbrush, but that's okay. I can live with that. That's better. Yeah, micron pens would work. Um, pit pens would work. If you have a carbon ink pen, that would work. I have a few of those. Which one I use really just depends on my mood. Honestly, that's all. I'm not, again, I'm not super worried about covering up my pencil lines because I'm going to um, leave them. I'm not going to try to erase them. And also remember that your paint's going to dry a lot lighter than it goes on. Um, so you may find after it dries that you want to go back in here with um, some of those pens anyway over a few of the lines to give them more of a suggestion of the shape that you're looking for. Yeah, I love Derwent products. They're some of my favorite. They make some really great art products, art supply products.
Now there's a lot of masts in the original photo. I'm not going to draw them all in because honestly that would make me crazy. <laughs> I just want to give the suggestion of the mat. Oops, mass. It's a big droplet of water. There we go. And the pencil lines will help do that. It'll suggest more mass than I've actually drawn in here with the paint or the pencil. If you take a watercolor class and you're um, painting um, buildings um, or architecture, a lot of times they will use this technique um, with the ruler for some of your straight lines or a gift card or something like that. a friend who is a retired, fairly well-known pen and ink artist, he'd be cringing because he'd be like, your lines aren't perfectly straight, and he'd be wanting me to go in here and pen and fix them. <laughs> but that's not the kind of art I do. Hey, Carol Mitten, was that you I just saw pop in? Control issues. I totally have control issues. Hey! The more stressed out I am, the more control issues I have. Oh yeah, J Jim has, he, love him, but yeah. His name is Jim Campbell. He does a lot of nautical and historical scenes. He's been on three US postage stamps. So he probably knows a little bit about what he's talking about. He's just a different kind of artist than I am, that's all. I cannot do what he does with pen and ink with paint. Yeah, you know, yeah, my phone goes off all the time now. My husband's always now saying, oh, Periscope, Periscope. But sometimes it's um, not art people. It's kind of weirdos. There's some funny things here put on Periscope, I think. I'm resting my hand on the edge of the board so I can get my lines a little bit straighter. Yeah, I keep getting Periscope notifications about, I've gotten a couple where I didn't watch the scope, but the title of it was Naked Something, and I was like, what? what the heck? <laughs> Why would that show up on my thing? I don't know. I know, you, ew, right? So, I don't know. I thought it was odd. So, I'm just drawing in a suggestion of my mass. I'm not 
being too precise about it because this is a suggestion of the harbor. I don't want it to be a realistic portrayal by any stretch. Yes, uh, yes, I am. My husband and I went to um, Half Moon Bay over the weekend and Santa Cruz. It was a fabulous drive. It wasn't too hot out. We ate some great clam chowder. I spent some money at Palace Art and Office Supply that I probably shouldn't have spent because I really couldn't afford it, but I did anyway. <laughs> That's pretty good. I like that. Let's keep going. So in the in, in the photo inspiration photo, there is this crossbar here on this one ship that I'm pretty sure was a fishing ship. It might have even been a commercial fishing ship. I know nothing about boats and ships. I tend to get seasick. Um, I'm just copying the shapes that I'm seeing. And I'm gonna add that crossbar. I don't fish, yes. I like to eat fish, does that count? Okay, so that's not bad, that's getting there, right? Oops. So it's getting there. So now I wanna take, um, I need some brown. Uh, let's see. Let's actually pull in some sepia. Thank you. Sepia is like a grayish brown color. Yeah, this I like this kind of stormy gray oceany color palette obviously. So this is sepia, so this is like a grayish brown. I'm going to use it here on the walkway. There's a walkway here between these two ships. And I'm still using that pointed filbert, which is a brush that I love. And this Princeton brush is meant for use with um, watercolor or acrylic, by the way. I love to buy these when they're um, Aaron Brothers Art and Framing, which is owned by Michaels, will have um, a few times a year they have buy one brush, get two free. And that's usually when I stock up when I need new paint brushes. So that's a good color there. I like that. I want to add some of this to some of the boats too, I think. Let's see. going to suggest shapes in the boat without actually drawing. We're just being suggestive, right? The Air Brothers. They are a little bit different from Michael's. They have, uh, I, in my opinion, they have, um, and this is just my opinion, I think they have a better selection of fine art supplies, although it's usually a much smaller store. They're focused on framing and fine art. Um, and I, I prefer that, so. So I'm just going in here and I'm suggesting the shape of my boat with the sepia paint. I've got some um, masking fluid on here and I won't really know for sure if all those colors are in the right place until I pull it off. That's okay. I'm going to do this with another boat. These boats are closer in the picture to the viewer.
that was probably too much sepia paint, but maybe not because this boat, this boat's pretty dark. Maybe because it's being overshadowed by that one, I'm not sure, although this one could use a darker spot up here. laying down some color then adding clean water and letting some of the lines bleed maybe not all of them but some I'm gonna lift some of this right here because I think that's too dark no I'm not saving this for YouTube I probably should have been well actually I shouldn't say that this is recording to my telephone and so I can actually pull that off my phone and post it on YouTube, which I don't normally do if you've been watching me on Periscope. But if you would like me to, you guys let me know. And I definitely can do that. You won't see all the comments, but you will see me painting. So maybe that's something that you guys want me to do. I can do that. I did that with, what video did I do that with? Um, recently, and I added it to a video, an extra video I filmed and you guys liked it, so maybe that's something you guys do want me to do. Let's see. I need to go back to our neutral tint. I can do that. I can put it up on YouTube. And I'm going to add some of the lunar blue to the neutral tint. And as I'm going across here, I'm going to work on our reflections in the water. Oh, you're welcome. I can get it up there, not, not a problem. So I'm just I've got the neutral tint and some lunar blue here mixed together. Dry off this big brush and I'm going to use the back end of it here to scratch into the paper. Just add a little bit at a time. Don't add too much because if you add too much and you get it in the wrong place, you can't take it back. But that's one of the fun things about working with watercolor. And all of these scratchy lines will, um, the paint will stick in the line. So it's just going to give you one more piece of um, an interesting mark, an interesting thing on your painting. right now what do y'all think there's the painting here's the original photo yeah thank you
<clears throat> I love this um, harbor when we go to Half Moon Bay. You know, like any other harbor, it's kind of stinky. It smells like dead fish, but it's pretty. And I don't think I've ever been there when it's super warm. I think I've always missed, missed um, the warm days. I am painting on 140 pound cold press watercolor paper, which is my preference. Um, I would love to paint on 300 pound, but I can't afford 300 pound. That is not in the budget. <laughs> I don't know about you guys, but that's really expensive. Um, and I prefer cold press because I like the texture. Um, I've tried um, hot press, which is very smooth. It can be. I usually buy my cold press when it's on sale. So like when Michael's um, has a sale on paper, I usually get um, go and stock up. Um, I, I like Fabriano paper. Again, I wait until um, Dick Blick or somebody has it on sale and then I stock up when it's on sale because yeah, it can be really pricey. Um, I do buy a lot of pads. I don't always and I actually have quite a few of the really large sheets of Fabriano paper. Um, but most of what I do is pretty small and the pads are easier to get and they're easier to get on sale. And when you're on a budget like we all are, right, then you need to do what you can afford. And I'm just using the straight sepia. I'm not mixing it with anything else right now. I'm liking the way this is looking on here. And even with my tubes of paint, um, when I first started collecting the fine, finer quality artist paints, um, yeah, we're all watching the pennies, yeah. I would just go in with, you know, my budget of $20 or whatever, and I would get, you know, sometimes that would only buy two tubes of paint. Sometimes it would only buy one tube of paint. Um, and if I had a coupon, I would use a coupon. Um, some of your, um, fine art stores if you teach online um, or you teach like at Michaels like I was teaching at Michaels and you can prove that you do they'll give you a like 20% discount um, so you know I always go for all of those discounts that I can get all of them uh, I need some more sepia I might add a little bit of this kind of reddish color, which is bloodstone, which is a brown, uh, yeah, 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 reddish brown. Uh, first, I'm going to grab some more sepia. Okay. So at some point, when you're doing a painting like this, and you're y yes, you're inspired by the photo that you took. That doesn't mean you have to copy it exactly. At some point, you're gonna do what's best for the painting and what's not necessarily in the photo. And that's okay. This is your painting. What's the worst that can happen? Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Lessons in patience, having a crafting budget. Isn't that the truth? You know, I wish I was one of these teachers um, or artists that, you know, was in a gallery making a lot of money. That would be wonderful. It's not my reality. <laughs> so, you know, it is what it is and I'm happy to be painting and sharing with you all. But yeah, if we had to um, eat based on what I made on YouTube and everything, yeah, it's 
we'd be starving. <laughs> so you just keep adding layers to your painting until you're happy. That's really all this is about. I'm trying to just make sure that I have all of my shadows in the same spot all the way across the painting. Trying to like refine my shapes as I go. Adding clear water where I want to be more suggestive and less literal about my shapes or where I've put paint in, in slightly the wrong place. Because that happens. Yeah, I like that. So wherever you are, wherever you go, no matter the occasion, just have your cell phone out to take some pictures and get yourself some artistic inspiration for your next painting or journal page. You never know where the inspiration is going to come from next. I always have some form of electronic device with me to take photos and stuff with even if it's just sometimes just my phone. Does anybody have any questions out there? You guys got to remind me to talk because I'll just get to painting. I'll forget to talk. <laughs> That wouldn't be the first time that happens. I usually cut it out of YouTube. Maybe I'll record, I'll save the recording of this off my phone and maybe we'll make this a watercolor Wednesday. <laughs> More heart. I love the hearts. Thank you so much. Okay, I like that so far, but I'm thinking it needs a pop of something. So here's what we have so far. Yeah. And sometimes when you start painting, you get to the point where you think, Ugh, what the heck did I do? That's really ugly. Just keep working because every painting I've ever done has an ugly duckling stage. Or yeah, it needs a pop of something, right? Something warm to indicate the sun and I do I think that's going to happen next first I want to finish working with the shadows in the um, water over here because it does need a pop I totally agree with you so we've got our neutral tint add some water to it and then we're going to get our lunar blue add a little bit of that and we're going to start, I'm going to start over here. And I'm not going to go too far before I rinse my brush off again. And I go back and add a little water to blur those lines just a little bit. And get that paint to move just a little bit. Um, I also need to pull down some of these masks into the water because they'd be reflected in the water. Now again, you can use um, something sharp with the back of your paintbrush or something else too. 
drag some lines You don't necessarily need to do all of them, you just need to do enough of them that you're giving a good representation of your reflections in the water. Okay, that's water. If you want to learn more about expressive watercolors, I really do recommend the Jean Haynes books or DVDs. Um, she's a really great expressive watercolorist. She does an all, she does all kinds of subject matter, from nature and flowers to scenic views and people. Okay, so now just tap on above the little person icon that's on the right of your screen and that will give you the um, hearts. You know, I, when I started this on camera, I said I didn't think I was going to get it done today, but you know what? I think I, maybe I lied. <laughs> I'm thinking I lied. So now is about the time when I go in and I add some dark darks light lights which we we kind of did already I haven't taken the masking fluid off yet we're gonna have to dry this before we do that um all right so one thing I want to do thank you my husband's old blue jeans <laughs> literally so I have some sepia here and I have some of this bloodstone color and I'm gonna go here into this mountain dam thing I think it was Part of the the man-made harbor and I'm gonna just give it a little bit more interest by running this color sort of over over it here it was made out of earth and concrete so that's pretty good I think I want to go, I need to go in with, you know, I think I want to go in with Nicolazzo yellow. That's a color that you wouldn't normally see in this painting and it's not in the photograph, but um, I need some more water. Okay, so this is Nicolazzo yellow right here. which is kind of a bright like greenish yellow. I'm going to say the sun is coming from this way. So if that was true, then this side of everything would have a warm reflection from the sun. It wasn't really, it was pretty, actually a pretty dreary day, so there actually wasn't too much sun that day. I'm kind of giving it more light and life than it actually had that day. Because <laughs> it was pretty overcast. I'm going to 
I'll lift some if I get too feel like I have too much in the in you know on the paper. I'm going to add a little bit of it to the water, just a little bit. There we go. And that gives the water some life. Look how that made that pop up right there and, and really just come to life right there. So it's a really strong pigment, so just put a little bit on it on your paper and then just get some clean water. I'm going to put a little bit up here. That's pretty good. You know what? I'm pretty happy with that. Let's um, do a couple more things to it and then let's get that masking fluid off. I want to give my bird a little bit of some dark color. I think the bird just needs to have some black in him. I keep trying to do it with a different color, but I think it just needs some black. Yeah, that's better. All right, let's dry it. Uh, gotta do this carefully because I don't want to do anything weird to the masking bird. Does anybody have any questions while I'm doing this? Okay, I need my um, rubber cement eraser. Have you considered using a ranger heat tool? Um, yes, but I have this one. <laughs> so I don't feel the need to buy another one. Um, there's nothing wrong with the ranger heat tool at all. I understand it works very well. I just didn't feel the need to have two of them. If Ranger sends me one, I'll use it. <laughs> I don't think I'm on their radar, but you know. So now I'm just rubbing off the masking fluid that I had on here from earlier. And that preserved some of the paper in its pristine white state. And it gave me some extra lines to suggest some shapes that normally would be hard to preserve them. in watercolor painting. Feels like there's a piece right there. That's pretty good. Okay, so I'm thinking that we need to do a little bit more of that same yellow. And a little bit of sepia. That's not sepia. Oops. Sepia. That was too much sepia. I need to frame and hang this one. Yeah, right? I need more. I need a bigger house with more wall space is what I need. <laughs> All right, I'm going to put, because the sunlight is over here, and the one thing that doesn't have any warmth on it from the sun is this um, damn thing. So everything I do is always for sale or copies of it is. So if you guys see, if you see something you're interested in, email me or contact me through Facebook. Um, you, I have a lot of things listed in my Etsy shop. Sometimes the original is not for sale because it was a gift for somebody um, or it's just some, maybe it's something in my journal. Um, but that doesn't mean I can't get you a copy of it. My daughter's a photographer and she photographs almost everything I do, so.
So this is the sepia mixed with a little bit of that yellow. And now is the time that you can really, you know, lay in some of these dark colors and really give your piece some interest. Now, the other thing you can do is you can do, do the unexpected and add a cool color that suggests shadow without actually being like black. So I'll give you a for instance. This is a color called Moon Glow by, of course, Daniel Smith. It is one of the paints I bought this weekend because I'm running out. <laughs> it is this dark purpley gray color right here. Um, Etsy shop is my name, Gina B. Aarons. If you don't see what you want in the shop, of course, just let me know and um, contact me and I will um, get it listed for you or we'll work something out privately. So this is a dark purpley gray color and this color suggests shadow very nicely. And it gives your painting a pop of the unexpected. You're welcome. I mean, you know, I have copies of things. I have digital um, prints. I have my own line of rubber stamps. I've got more canvases that I can shake a stick at. They actually all need to find their forever home because they're, I have no more room to hang anything, seriously. All right. So we're gonna just go in to like the ships and we're gonna use this violet, violety gray color, this blood uh, moonstone to add some depth to our shadows that we have going on. And it's just kind of a pop of the unexpected color that makes the painting look really interesting. Like the yellow is a warm color that suggests lightness and brightness and warmth. The purpley violet color of the moonstone suggests coolness and shadow. Your cool colors, generally speaking, are like your blues and your violets and your green, some of your greens and your warm colors are your oranges and your reds and your pinks. So whatever I do to one ship, I just need to carry across the whole painting so that it goes all the way across. And I might even put some into the water a little bit. looks pretty good. I'm liking the way that looks. I kind of like that. I don't know if it really needs too much more. what I want to do is mix up a color 
I missed that last comment. Whoever posted that posted again. I like it too. Yeah. I, I just, I don't know. I don't know that it needs too much more. I'm going to mix up a combination of the moonstone and the lunar blue. Let me, um, let me know if you guys have any questions or anything. I encourage you to give this a try. I think that you would like the process. I know watercolor can be a little scary for people, but don't be scared. Just give it a try. What's the worst that could happen? Get yourself an inexpensive set of watercolors to start. You don't have to start out with the most expensive thing on the planet. Yeah, see, so if you start thinking of your colors this way um, in shades of cool and warm instead of, you know, light and dark, and you start thinking about what colors in that frame of mind that you can use to suggest your shapes, you get a more interest. whether you're working on a journal page or you're working on a painting, you get a more interesting finished piece, I think than you normally would and I think you guys will like the process a little better and whether you're working in paint or you're working with markers or you're working in collage if you kind of just keep those um, thoughts in mind those color choices I think you'll be happier I got too much water right there You guys realize I should still be like doing my chores. <laughs> I'd rather paint. All right. I do think we're almost done though. This is looking really good. I'm really happy with it. And it might end up for sale in my Etsy shop or at least a copy of, so look for it there soon. Probably in a matted and framed shape. once I cut the mat for it. <laughs> I'm just using kind of the leftover bits of paint that are on my palette. And what I'm doing is I'm, you know, adding more shadows and highlights. I'm also blending some of those um, lines left by the masking fluid, blending them in to the surrounding painting by just adding a few more marks and it makes them look more like they be really do belong. I'm loving painting with this paintbrush, I gotta tell you guys. I love the fact that it has a really fine small tip on it that I can paint with, or that I can just lay it down flat and cover a big area. Like that I don't know I think it might be just about done what do you guys think you can't see the whole thing in the paint in the phone unless I do this <laughs> so that's sideways I'm sorry what do you all think I think it might just be about done 
Purple and yellow. Who'd have thunk it? Yeah, see? I didn't think I'd get it done today, but boy, I'm happy with that. All right, so now what you do is you take a mac, one of these, you know, sharp, pointy, sticky thing. All right. Thank you. I guess I could take it off here before I cut that ed folded edge off. I gotta pull the rubber things out. There we go. One. I probably should wait till it dries completely, but it's mostly dry to be honest with you. Three. One more. Four. All right. Now I don't always stretch paper because most of the time I work on a block and a block is glued on at least two sides, um, but I don't always work on a block and I do have paper that's like in a pad or that's giant sheets and I wanna be able to do paintings on that without it getting all warped and wrinkly, which is why I got this paper stretcher. You could use tape and tape the paper to a board. Um, I hate the tape. Uh, the tape drives me crazy. The tape is just, I don't know, I have problems with it. This paper's been in here a while, so give me a little hard time, hang on. Uh, where's my sticky, where's my pokey tool? I like, I like the stretcher board. It's really easy to use uh, to get the paper on here and it dries really, really tight and flat. It's just been on here a while and I don't have the grip today that my grip is not what it used to be since I had shoulder surgery, so there we go. So I have trouble getting stuff off of things like this sometimes. Okay. And you don't want to bend it, so you could cut it out and then pull these edges off, but I'm thinking it would be easier to do it this way. I should watch the Ken Bromley video. He shows you how to get it off of here easy. And look, he makes it look so easy. Holy moly. It's not as easy as they make you make it look. There we go. Ha! Okay. So now it's on. So this is what the board looks like. See the edges? So you have to soak your paper for like 15 minutes. Then you wrap it around the board and use those rubber stops to put it on. Then you take your edges. Somebody just asked about the edges. All righty. And your straight edge and your knife. And you cut them off. You could do a painting like this without taping it down or putting it on a board. The thing is though, that when you get the paper really wet, it's gonna buckle. And I never have good luck with getting the paper to lie flat again. So then you just cut all these um, edges off. I could probably use my paper trimmer. Might be easier. Oh, somebody shared my video on Twitter. That was nice. I didn't plan this. I never plan these things. 
Am I supposed to plan them? Okay. My, my cutting mat's a little bit sticky because I did collage Friday and it, um, I got glue stick on it. And Sarah Whitney and Anne, who's on here right now, they could both tell you I'm kind of bad about um, cleaning glue off on things. All my scissors are sticky. Yeah, see, Anne says, yep. My scissors drive them both crazy. My scissors are all sticky. And you just go all the way around and you just remove all the funny edges and you would do this if you used um, if you use tape I don't know what it's called I don't think it's called watercolor tape but it's the brown brown tape you use to stretch watercolor paper if you use the tape you, you still have to cut it off you cut the tape it taped edges off These are trash. And there you have it. Gum tape, that's it, gum tape. So then you have it, it looks like this. And it measures about nine and a half by mm, about 13 and a half. I like it, I think it turned out really well. I'm happy with that. I think that's a framer. What do you guys think? Now I still could if I wanted to touch up anything on here. I could still do that. I just wouldn't want to do a lot of it because now it would um, it would buckle. I am noticing though right here. Let's see. What's that moon glow color? There we go. I think right here though. You don't want to do too much after you have take, taken it off your board because it's going to get all funky and not funky in a good way. But I would take it off the board before I decided if I wanted to put any um, ink pen on here. Um, I still don't know if I want to do that. I think I might want to leave it with just the paint. I'm not sure. Goofy bone. Hey, Goofy bone. Yeah, I like that. I'm going to stop messing with it now. So there we have it. I'm going to turn it sideways because otherwise you guys will never get the whole thing in there. There you go. There's the painting, finished painting. And this is the inspiration photo that I took with my cell phone of Half Moon Bay, California. I will try to post pictures of both on social media tonight, sometime before the end of the day. So you, um, you can look for them there. Um, and when I do that, I always post to Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, LinkedIn, <laughs> all those and I, I post in Facebook on my personal page, Crazy Island Families page, my group page which is a life of art and self-expression and also um, Kelly Donovan's page all things creative. Thank you. I think that's it right now. I should probably go try to get some chores done. <laughs> you guys let me know um, what you want to see the next time I'm on. Um, or what you want to see on YouTube. I will save this video footage and I'll post it up on um, YouTube. Um, 
And if you see it, are seeing it, it on YouTube, um, know that if you have any questions, comments, or concerns, all of my contact information is in the description below all of my YouTube videos. And um, those of you who don't watch me on YouTube and are watching me right now on, on Periscope, my YouTube channel is my name, Gina B. Aarons. And um, if you have a product you'd like me to review or try, again, my contact information is in the description below. And don't forget the most important thing. Have a good day and do something nice for yourself because you deserve it. And I'm glad you liked it. It was a, it was a, a last minute thing and I, um, you know, like I said, I didn't think I'd get this far with this painting to be honest with you, but I am really pleased with the way it turned out. You're welcome. You're welcome so much. And I hope you guys decide to watch some of these, whether you're watching it on YouTube or Periscope and you decide to play, paint along with me. Um, I'm thinking about doing a maybe like a Google Hangout where um, you guys are all watching me um, live in a Google Hangout or I'm helping you paint or something like that. So um, I'm, I'm mulling it over. I'm not sure how to do it yet. So I'm, you know, it's, I'm think it's in the planning stages. Yay. The b biggest thing I can tell you is just try it. Just give it a try. Don't be afraid of having failures, making mistakes. I made plenty of them. Believe me, I could show you some crap. I've got piles of it. Um, the best way to learn how to paint with any medium, um, whether it's watercolor or acrylic or any, just try it. That's the best way to learn. And there's some really great teachers out there um, who you can learn a lot from. Some of them are free on YouTube. Um, Sterling Edwards is one. Um, there, there are so many of them. Um, I can't even tell you. Some of the books that I was naming earlier, um, she's on there. Um, hold on, I can tell you. Let's see. Yeah, yeah, yeah. This is my... Um, <laughs> these are CDs, because I watch um, learning CDs like when we're on road trips. So Janet Rogers, you won't get all of her videos on YouTube, but you do get snippets of them. Um, and she's really great to learn from. And her husband, Steve Rogers, she does a lot of expressive florals. He does a lot of landscapes and seascapes and um, cityscapes. Yep, toy with it, ditch it, toy with it. Exactly, that's exactly what you should do. Um, let's see. Sterling Edwards, see yeah, I have quite a few of his, and then Jean Haynes. You can see a little bit of hers sometimes on YouTube too, so search. I do recommend getting their books or CDs um, to uh, watch. Um, I have to catch up on this, I'm like way behind. Um, especially if you do something like I do and you go on a lot of road trips, I have actually a DVD player and I sit with it in my lap and watch it while we're on the road. Um, or sometimes here on my work desk, I'll sit with the DVD player and put headphones in. So, um, you know, definitely do that, but just play, play and just don't be afraid of making mistakes. And, um, yeah, paint mojo. Oh, I would love to do paint mojo. That would be so much fun. Um, it's not in the budget right now, but that is my dream for next year. My husband and I are going to be, our, we've already got like four trips planned already. Uh, we're going to be doing a lot more traveling and hopefully arting and traveling and meeting up with maybe some of you guys. That would be fun. So, uh, all right, I'm going to get back to what I'm supposed to be doing today, which is not being on Periscope. I have chores to do and I've got to go pick up the mail. <laughs> All right, I will talk to you all later. Don't be afraid to um, try this with inexpensive watercolors. This is my Daniel Smith set, but you can do this with anything. I started with an inexpensive student grade Talon set. Uh, Koi, Koi works well. You guys know I like the Koi set. All right, yeah, I'm glad I ditched the chores too, right? This was more fun. All right, you guys all have a great day. Go out and do there and get some painting done, get something creative done and express yourself. All right, talk to you later, bye.